<laughs> morning everyone it's saturday morning and um, i was noticing something just the other day with the my energy zappy and the energy consumption here at home in norfolk and i thought i wanted to try and share it with you so that's what i'm doing today i brought the camera outside to the gazebo um, amongst some traffic so i apologize um, for the background noises but this is this is the best i'm going to get today so what i what i want to share with you today is a little bit of sad news i suppose because as most of you know i love my my energy zappy i've got the zappy one and it is a great piece of kit for charging my electric cars but i've just noticed that it's it's the highest consumer of grid energy here at home of all the appliances of all the electrical devices i have at home here the my energy zappy is the one that when it's on i notice a big difference in grid usage so i wanted to try and share that with you and try and put some reality to it there's some disappointment because it is the highest consumer there's some disappointment because it's using more grid energy than i want it to use but there's also some positive news that it's, it's actually not that much energy. So let me show you the first chart here, the one that uh, prompted me to think what the heck is going on here. And what you can see is it's the octopus energy chart for a day's usage. And you can see some really large blocks there of something happening, something specific between two different times. And that time maps out to the zappy in use charging my mini. Now, I looked back on previous days with um, Octopus Energy and those same spikes, those same significant rises in energy during the day occur when I'm using the My Energy Zappy device. Now, from what I'm using for the rest of the day, throughout the night, throughout the morning, while I'm cooking, while I'm turning other devices on, it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference in proportion time. But in actual energy wise, as you can see from the bottom of this chart, I'm only using a couple of tenths of energy, but it's those couple of tenths that are all going towards the My Energy Zappy. And I can't help but think when I'm analysing data, looking at charts, why? Why is it doing it and what can I do to try and optimise it or reduce it? So I started to have a look and have a play to see what I could do. Now I already have set uh, the My Energy Zappy to 100% green. So basically as soon as it detects that it's using grid usage, it'll start the countdown to cut out. But with a home storage battery, as soon as it detects grid use, the counter goes for the Zappy. But obviously the battery also sees that there was some grid use, so it provides some power. Now if the battery is working fast enough, which the one that I have at the moment does, the Huawei Luna 2000 battery, that reacts really fast. So just as the Zappy starts to see some grid usage, it disappears because the battery has picked it up. So in theory, there shouldn't be a lot of grid usage because the battery should pick it up. But of course, if the battery is picking up all of the demanded power, then as the sun gradually reduces and you don't have enough solar to provide the charge, then the battery could get maxed out. And at that point, as you turn something else on, then obviously it'll consume grid usage. But also at the point where the battery is slowly ramping down, because it's, it's, not a, it's not a case of the battery will provide a continuous power and keep going up and up and up. We haven't got a, um, or oh, what's the term? We haven't got a runaway situation where the Zappy demands power, the battery provides it. The Zappy demands even more power, the battery provides it. We haven't got that situation where it's continually going up. It is balanced quite well, but there are periods of time where the battery holds it in use. So what I'm looking at is what is causing this problem? And the only difference that I can see is between the eddy and the Zappy, because the Eddy doesn't have this problem. Now, the Eddy is using up to 3.1 kilowatts of power. The um, Zappy, well, actually, it's only using up to 3.8, 3.9 kilowatts of power because I've set the Mini into reduced charge mode. I seem to like the idea of charging at around 3 to 4 kilowatts, not the full 7, because the higher the amount of energy you're using, as it drops as a cloud goes past, then there's a big drop and that big drop means differences in export and import so if i keep it more around the three to four i'm more likely to keep within my solar um 
power abilities. Um, the amount of solar power coming through is going to match what I'm charging more. And if we have an extra house demand that comes online, then there should still be some battery power to provide it. So that, that's sort of why I'm doing it. Reduce charge mode, do everything slower, more calmly, within capacity, and I should have less grid use. But it's obviously not quite working. Like I said, there's a difference. The Eddy doesn't have the problem, the Zappy does. So what's the difference? And the only difference I can see is the timer. The timer um, in the Zappy, which says once I see grid usage, then how long before we actually cut out the charge? And that's set to a minimum of 10 seconds. Now, at least oh, probably about a year or so ago when the Zappy 1 first came out and the first year or so of usage, that timer used to be five seconds. So it's been a firmware update that my energy have now increased the minimum to 10 seconds. Now for me, that's a bit, it's a bit controlling, isn't it? Because if I want to set it to five seconds, why can't I? They're telling me what I can do and they're telling me what they think is safe for charging with the car, but they don't know how I use it. So I would argue that the minimum ought to be almost one second, you know, with a caveat and a warning that the lower you go, the more um, start and stop will occur with the charging and it could cause some damage to the device that you're charging, your car. But I've never heard of a single car being damaged through starts and stops of charging like that. So, you know, it might be my ignorance or it might be my energy being overcautious. Whichever, I would like to see less grid usage. Now, if that parameter is a key factor, then uh, perhaps we should do something about that. So there's a couple of other things as well. Um, one of the things that you can change is the export margin. So I have tried with a zero export margin and a 50 watt export margin and a 100 watt export margin. That's set on the master device, which is my my energy zappy device. So what's that saying is always leave 100 watts of or 50 watts whatever you've got it set to of export going out so it doesn't try and balance to zero it doesn't try to grab all of the solar energy that's available it lets some slip through and lets some go back out to the grid now the idea for that is obviously the more towards export you go and you balance more than towards grid usage then obviously the less grid usage there will be because you're more balanced towards export so i've also tried that and it it seems to make a small difference, but it doesn't seem to solve the problem. The Zappy or my grid usage is still much higher than I would hope I could get it to be whilst I'm charging using the Zappy. So sadly, I haven't got an answer for you because there is no magical solution other than to have a much more powerful home battery storage system that can provide twice or three times the power that this battery solution can provide. So Tesla Powerwall, with its instantaneous reaction times to loads, plus also it can provide up to five kilowatts. I guess if you've got one of those, you're far likely, far less likely to see grid usage, where even with a home storage battery here that is reacting really, really fast, I am still seeing some. And I, I think it's that timer. So I would like to see the timer. Hello, Cracker, come and see us then. <laughs> Cracker's come to join us. Have a look out of the window. What are you doing? Hey, hey, no, look, don't photobomb me. That's not fair. What's that? Yes. <laughs> so crack has interrupted my train of thought, but basically that's what I want to share with you today. The frustrations that I'm experiencing with the MyEnergy Zappy device and just getting rid of those last couple of tenths of grid usage that we have here. This Huawei battery, I'll give you a fuller update later, but it is reacting so much faster than the Give Energy one that um, I used to go around the garden with the lawnmower, making sure that I held the power button on every time I turned corners, etc. Because if I let go of the power and started and stopped, every time you start and stop, it was using grid energy. Whereas with this Huawei battery, it reacts so fast, it doesn't matter. Things can go on and off and it reacts perfectly. The only device that's causing grid usage now here is the Zappy. So that's the one I'm working on. If you've got any magical ideas of what I can do to fix it, I would love to hear from you. Yes, I've tried export margin and I don't really fancy going much more than a 100 watts, but um, I'm not sure. Have you tried more? What sort of settings work for you? What sort of battery storage systems do you have or do not have at home? And what sort of kilowatt hours are you experiencing of grid 
usage and how are you getting on with getting down to zero or near zero grid usage so yes i'm a little bit obsessed aren't i that i'm trying to get to absolute zero grid usage and without going off grid but um is it possible isn't it possible should i even be bothering because a couple of tenths of a kilowatt hour is what three pence should i really be bothered for three pence a day it's more the principle of the thing rather than the money for me it's not about how much it costs it's just this graph here and there's huge spikes that are there i should be able to reduce them if it works for every other device that i've now got i should be able to get it working for the my energy zappy and at the moment the only thing that i think is stopping me is the parameter where it says even though i know i should be cutting off I'm not going to. I'm going to set this timer of 10 seconds before I do. And that, that's got to be, it's got to be the problem anyway. Thanks for listening. Uh, not quite a rant, is it? But um, yeah, just an observation and an annoyance that I'm trying to get as low as I can and something's stopping me. Take care. See you again soon. Enjoy the football if you're watching that as well. Come on, England. <laughs> See you later. Bye for now.